Okay, so we have another question. Uh, this is in relation to antennas that you might see on the roof of your neighbors. Um, you know, how, do, how do these things affect us? Welcome to the GeoVital Academy. I'm excited that you're here. Okay, here we are at the uh, building site here in Thailand. So we're gonna take some measurements. Hold on to the wire. There's this concept of electronic pollution. I mean, we've been doing this for 35 years, but we're getting more and more involved in the um, shielding of entire homes. All right, so this is you know, our little demonstration room. We've got an opportunity to do a little bit of an interview with you, so people get to know you. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for, uh, for coming um, to EMF Q&A, where we uh, you know, give you an opportunity to sort of you know, connect with us and ask any, um, well, a lot of questions in relation to uh, existing homes. This is Patrick Vandenberg, your global radiation specialist. Okay, so most importantly, is it an antenna to receive with? Or is it an antenna that also broadcasts, that answers back? So if you see, you know, your, 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 there's big horizontal antenna with spikes at the side, you know, we've, we've seen those for a long, long time, you know, for television reception, let's say. Uh, those are things that receive only. Um, so having that antenna there doesn't expose you to anything extra. They're just picking signal out of the air just as much as the signal is present over your house or anybody else's house in your direct neighborhood. Interestingly enough, if you drive into a neighborhood and you notice that these antennas are on very tall poles, um, if you're looking for an area with less radio frequency radiation, that's sort of a good sign because the fact that they need to put them on higher poles, they're getting a weaker sort of signal. They're trying to get higher up, uh, which might be very beneficial for you down below if you're looking for lower exposure. Um, then, of course, there are things that do receive, uh, sorry, the, the transmit and receive. So satellite is a little hard to, to pick. As in, there's a lot of dishes out there that people have to, you know, gain more television channels, for example. Again, that's just listening. That's just receiving. So having that dish there doesn't really bother you. Um, in terms of um, receiving and transmitting, um, there's a bit more data-related systems uh, out now. People can have an antenna. Maybe they're square in shape. Um, that they aim to pick up uh, you know, data, internet from another location. So they'll be receiving, but they'll also be sending. Uh, now sending typically, you, it tries to concentrate, bring the signal back, of course, to the, um, to the, the other antenna that they're communicating with. So those antennas aren't necessarily trying to blast the signal in all directions. Um, but having said that, it's not sniper technology either. You know, those signals often do get wider as they track towards a source. Um, so if your neighbor has a dish that's aimed away from you, um, there'll probably be some radio frequency radiation coming in your direction, but most of it is traveling away from that dish. What is more interesting to contemplate is what the radiation of the other transmitter is doing that is aimed at the receiver on your neighbor's house. You've got two houses. On the best drawing. I'm getting better at this. All right, so let's say, which one shall we make your neighbor's one? Um, let's say that this is your neighbor's house and he's got a little square plate on the roof and they get their signal from let's say, an another town or maybe it's more rural property. It's just aiming towards the, the village or wherever the, the cell phone tower or the communication tower is. So let's say, you know, at a much greater distance than I can draw, let's say that there's a tower there and that has enough panels on it. Probably one or a few of those round directional transmitters. 
and perhaps some smaller panels that might be involved in connecting to certain homes. Now, it could be that you've got, you know, um, towers or signals that can broadcast really broad to a wide area, but you can also have towers where you have, you know, a dish for every user that it connects with, right? And so then you're more talking about directional transmitters. So they'll be aiming at that dish here, but as I said, it's not really sniper technology. That signal will be going wide, or it could even do things like that. As in, you know, you get this sort of stuff. Okay, so whilst this receiver transmitter combination on top of this house might be communicating with the cell phone tower or this tower that's, I don't know, kilometers, miles away, um, you might not get an awful lot of radiation from that dish, but this dish is beaming at this house. And so if you're caught in a crossfire, now you could be in front, you could be to the side, you can even be a house more in the distance behind it. All right, this looks a little bit less attractive. Um, but you could be caught in a crossfire before, behind that house, and depending on how wide that signal gets, also to the side. Uh, the Geovital Academy in Austria is um, in, uh, it's a township, it's not Salt, it's in Salzburg, uh, which is a little village, not Salzburg, not Salzburg, the big city. The Salzburg is a little village, and we also have a cell phone tower, it's on top of the pizzeria in town. Um, and that beams down into the valley, into Austria. And in the valley, there's another cell phone tower with a directional transmitter. And that beams all the data that Salzburg uses up to that cell phone tower on top of the pizzeria. Uh, now, we have a client that has their house exactly on that center line between these two transmitters, a little bit down the hill, uh, but on that center line. We've walked with meters, uh, eight, 900 meters, to the left and to the right, still being able to pick up that signal from the transmitter um, down into the valley. So that field can be quite wide. Okay. Um, so yeah, anyway, the punchline is that you have to you have to protect yourself against radiation sources from all directions. And um, of course, a lot of this technology, I mean, maybe these internet dishes, you would pick that up on an uh, you know an RF meter. Uh, what's more problematic are these round dishes that you see on cell phone towers. Um, they um, you know, shoot out um, powerful um, radiation signals, but at much higher frequencies than even we can uh, measure in many cases. Um, and they go over great distances. So yeah, that's that's more of a worry per se. So yeah, to go back to the question, how do antennas on top of your neighbor affect you? Um, a lot of them are just receiving. A lot of satellite dishes are also just receiving, but you do have these data connections that beam both ways. Um, and so, yeah, you'll be maybe affected a little bit by what sort of comes to the side of that device. I mean, they're never just going in one direction, they're always a little bit coming to the sides. Uh, but what would probably be more of a worry is what is aimed at you. Um, but that falls under the same category as those directional transmitters in your normal sort of panels to try and connect with the actual cell phones. Okay. Um, yeah, so anyway, I hope that answers your questions and it highlights again the need for when you put shielding in a bedroom that you need to shield all walls and ceiling. And if the bedroom is not on ground floor, you need to do the floor as well um, to basically prote be protected from radio frequency radiation from all directions regardless of what it is now, as in where the sources are now, because when new sources are introduced, or put into your environment, nobody sends you a letter that there's a new tower gone up or a new transmitter is put it on the same tower. Um, but having your shielding from all directions, um, you have your protection against what comes at you from all directions. All right, thank you for that question.